I didn't succeed in living at London in the Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for joining. I'm coming to you today with a, I'm gonna call it a suggested video. A friend Jess said it was something I could do that she might be interested in, but I, I would by no means call it requested. This is, this is all me annoying you with my voice. I want to talk about things I wish I'd known before I moved to London. Obviously I'm not in London right now and that is because it was a little bit of a failure. The reasons for that failure, some of them I'm going to talk about now regarding finances and jobs. Um, some of it, it's just not, not for the internet, it's not for other people's ears, it just, you know, life happens. But yes, I would say that I failed to live in London. For some context, I moved there back in 2019 in September to do a Masters at King's College London. I then tried to stay from September 2020 for about six months and it did not work out. I couldn't afford my rent, I still hadn't found a graduate job and it just made staying impossible despite the fact that my boyfriend, it, well he's still, he's still there and you know, a lot of my friends are there, my life was there. So I can safely say that I did not succeed at living in London, however, I did learn a fair few things. So I'm going to talk to you about things that I wish I had known before I moved. First things first, it's really expensive. Like imagine going to a different country where the exchange rate means that your pound does not go as far as it would when you live currently. That's what living in London is like. Everything's expensive. Even the stuff in the supermarkets is more expensive in London than it is in Suffolk where I am now. Separate issue is travel, but I will say travel is more expensive than you think because a pound fifty bus is one bus. It takes longer to get places than you think and you'll end up spending more on travel than you think. So I'd been working before I moved to London to do my masters and I only had £4,000 to live on after rent and that was not enough. So I would say look into how much things cost before you go. Don't try and live on what a student could live on in a different part of the country. Do your research and make sure you've saved up enough and that you've got the means to stay there for either the duration of your course if you're a student or the foreseeable future. So the second thing I wish I'd known was travel. If you have a student discount on your rail card that's great it makes it less expensive however all of those overground journeys those bus journeys um, I was living in Camberwell which is in South London my voice has gone really weird I was living in Camberwell which is in South London so there wasn't a tube those costs really start to rack up and um, it's a bit Having an Oyster card, they say, is the cheapest way to do it, doing contactless payments. However, that cap is still quite a lot of money. £6 a day if you're a student, £8 a day if you are a muggle. And that really started to rack up, especially if you're hopping from place to place. I found that when I was doing zero hours work with the company, I was spending half my wages up to, so I was earning £10 an hour, but not being paid for travel, I was spending six or eight pounds of that hour's worth of work on getting to and from the place I was working, so it just was not feasible. And it's something you need to be really aware of, thinking, oh yeah, travel's cheap. Further out you live, the cheaper the rent will be, but the more expensive travelling in will be. I wish I'd known that people who live north of the river don't tend to come south and people who live south of the river don't tend to come north. Everyone gets quite territorial about where they live in London and unless you're forced to go because of work it's unlikely you would choose to go very far the other way to where you live. Everywhere is about an hour away so I had to travel for about an hour to get to both my internship in Lambeth and the Strand which is where my university campus was 
and you get used to it that's just a normal commute but say if I was going to visit my friend Toby who lives up in Finsbury Park it was over an hour you'd have to take a train to Waterloo and then head up on the tube all the way up to North London and it makes meeting up for nights out a bit of a nightmare because people are like oh well I don't want to go too far from where I live but if you live on opposite ends of the city someone's gonna have to do the travel. I wish I had known that I kind of thought the whole grumpy Londoner thing was a myth and then when I moved I was kind of still walking down the street saying hello to people, nodding, smiling, head down, walk fast. And the longer you live in London, the more like that you become. My walking speed was fast beforehand, but now it's, you know, speedy if I'm not suffering from particularly bad fatigue that day. Now I'm back in the countryside in Suffolk, I walk the same route every day. I've got back into the groove of, of not being a Londoner, but um, it is infectious. When you're living in London, particularly when you were just living there, you're not a student there. So I thought I would, I thought I'd be going to the theatre loads, seeing loads of the sights and doing London things. But the truth of the matter is when I was a student, I didn't see much theatre. I still haven't been to the Globe, which is embarrassing because I'm an early modernist and I should have been. I didn't go on the London Eye, I didn't go to the Tower of London and when I was just living there and I didn't have a job I couldn't afford to go and do those things. I spent a lot of time in my student room and in my flat. It's just so expensive to live there that you don't end up doing the touristy stuff, you don't have the money. So I would say if you're looking to move to London purely to experience the arts side of the city you've got to be wealthy, you've got to be really well off to do that and I'm not and I probably will never be because I'm an English student and I think you're better off saving up, travelling in, maybe staying the night in a hotel but if you want to be going to the theatre every day that's a massive financial commitment and it's unrealistic for most of us. Final thing I wish I'd known was that it's a big city but a small world. So I bumped into quite a few people from different walks of my life, be it undergrad, university, where I used to work. I bumped into someone I know who I thought had gone back to Hong Kong in the economics department at UCL while I was doing work there and it was like oh you're here, <laughs> hello. So that was nice but strange. You will bump into people you know from all over the place and sometimes it's nice to feel like you're anonymous in a big city but equally you probably will still see people you know from all over the world because it's a city that attracts that. One other thing, I wish I'd known about the 24 hour McDonald's delivery because that was good and I would have been excited about that had I known beforehand. Now I miss it because you can't get takeaway in rural Suffolk, especially not during a pandemic. I miss 3am chicken nuggets. So that's all the stuff I wish I'd kind of known before I went and things I've learnt to be wary of now or appreciate now. Don't know if I'll ever move back. This is not a permanent move. I am hoping to move out of my parents at some point but obviously for now staying put, I've got a roof over my head, I've got food. That's all I can ask for and probably all anyone can ask for at the moment. Since there's a global pandemic happening. The boyfriend is still down in London, a lot of my friends are still there and I do wish it had worked out but you know some things just aren't meant to be, we all make mistakes and I can safely say that I've learnt from a lot of those mistakes. <laughs> If you have any questions about living in London either as a student or as just a I am more than happy to answer them and I will be lurking down in the comments so do just drop me a line. If you found this useful or just enjoyed my rambling please give it a thumbs up and until the next time I hope you're well, I hope you're safe, I hope that you are wearing a mask when you go outside. I will see you very soon. Bye!